Greetings, marketing wizard Jim Ackerman here with your good, bad, and ugly ads marketing tip of the day. In our last tip, we talked a little bit about the concept of the lifetime profit value of a customer. Do you know that there are five and only five ways to increase the lifetime profit value of a customer? Let's go through a few of them here. Number one, you can adopt the premium price position. In other words, raise your prices. Can you imagine that? Some people are scoffing, saying there's no way I can do that, especially in a recession, especially in a very competitive market that I'm in. But you know what? Unless you are the top person in your price category, you probably can raise your prices. And if you do so strategically and give people a reason to believe that you really do have the superior product or the superior service, you can probably do so without any throwback from your uh, customers at all. So that's number one. Number two, increase your average size transaction. Of course, if you increase the price, you'll do that. But how about other strategies for increasing the size of your average transaction, like upselling, add-on selling, and cross-selling? Number three, sell them something else. Figure out a way to go back to the well and ask them to buy again and again and again. The more times they buy, the greater the lifetime profit value of that customer is. When I talk to merchants, most of the time they're contacting their customer base and asking them to, to, to buy once or twice a year. What about four or five or eight or 12 times a year? You know, if you ask more often, they're likely to say yes more often. Next, take advantage of the back end. Can you do joint ventures with other non-competing merchants that will perhaps give you access to their database, but give you a chance to generate additional revenue from the folks on your own database without having to add expense, inventory, supplies, training, or anything else? And finally, lower costs. Now, that doesn't mean that you cheapen your products. And it doesn't mean that you per necessarily do less advertising. What it means is that you pay attention to the right numbers in your marketing and advertising, those numbers being the cost of acquisition of a customer, not just the upfront cost of advertising. Sometimes by running a larger ad, it costs you more upfront, but you bring in so much more business that the cost of acquisition of each transaction is actually lower. Think about that as you think about how to genetically engineer your marketing for ever-increasing success. Meanwhile, make sure you critique our current episode of Good, Bad, and Ugly Ads, subscribe to the channel, like it, and tell your friends about it, and I'll see you to hear my critique on that next episode of Good, Bad, and Ugly Ads.